There are four features that you can master for quicker creative editing in Final Cut. The magnetic timeline, connected clips, storylines, roles, and audio lanes. And the first one that I'm gonna go through is the magnetic timeline. So the first time I used the magnetic timeline, it was very weird. I came from Premiere Pro and used Final Cut and then I was just like, what is going on? But if you get used to using the magnetic timeline, it's gonna speed things up so much for you. The first thing to know is two keys, the letter A and the letter P. So when you're trimming your clips, when you have A selected or the selection tool, then it's gonna trim the clip without disturbing any of the clips around it. So it's not gonna overwrite any of the clips to the left or the right of it. Whilst also having the select tool selected, when you move clips, then you're not gonna overwrite any clips that you move it next to. So it'll create a little gap and then you can put the clip into that gap. Now, if you did wanna overwrite clips whilst you were moving them around, if you select P, which is the position tool, this is gonna create a gap whilst you're trimming. So if you trim your clip from the beginning or the end, it's gonna create a gap where you're trimming that clip. And then if you wanted to move a clip whilst you have the P tool selected, so the position tool, not the P tool, the position tool, tool, then you can drag that along and then that will actually overwrite whatever clip you put it over the top of. So that's just a really basic way of looking at the magnetic timeline so you're not pulling your hair out thinking why are things not working how I want to. So again, just remember the selection tool and the position tool. So the next feature is connected clips. And again, this is something which was completely unfamiliar to me when I came from Premiere to Final Cut, but it works great and it again speeds up your workflow. It's a really great way to add B-roll or secondary clips or sound effects, music, anything like that to a clip on the primary storyline. So by default, clips are connected when you drop them onto the timeline and they connect to that primary storyline. They tend to have their connection stem at the start of the clip. So when you drag that clip onto the timeline, you'll notice that there's this line and that's your connection, that's your stem. So that will connect to the clip on the primary storyline wherever you drop it. Even when you're stacking clips on top of each other, they're all connected to the primary timeline. So when you drag a clip around from the primary timeline, anything that's connected to it is also gonna move with it as well. This is also when you wanna move a selection of clips, but not so great when you just want to move one clip in the primary storyline, which is something that I was doing in the beginning and I was just getting really annoyed because everything was moving. So the first way to get around that is to actually disconnect a connected clip from a clip in the primary storyline and link it to something else. And the way that you do that is by holding command and option and then clicking the clip that you want to connect to a different clip at the position where you want to connect it. Then that connection stem is gonna be moved from the current clip on the primary storyline to the new clip that you've just clicked. So the second way is to actually use the grab accent key on your keyboard. So you wanna hold that down and then you can drag the clip from the primary storyline to a new location and that will disconnect it from the clips that it's connected to. And then if you wanna delete a clip from the primary storyline without disturbing the clips that it's connected to, then you can also hold down that grab key and then just hit delete and then it will just take away that clip and not disturb the clips that it's connected to. So Storylines is a really cool feature as well. It's like using connected clips, but it's got a little bit more organization to it. And it kind of acts in the same way as the primary storyline. And because it's like connected clips, you can move multiple clips around together without having to highlight them all. So to create a storyline, you can select one or more clips. So if you want to select loads of clips, you can just click and drag across all the clips and it'll highlight all of them. Or you can hold shift, click the first clip and then click the last clip and that will highlight all of them. And then you can press command G and that will add this box around all the clips. The other thing that you can do is just select all the clips, right click and create storyline. So if you wanted to break all those clips apart because you realize you actually didn't want them in there, then you can select the storyline and then hit shift command and G and that will break them all out of the storyline. So once the storyline's created, it's great. Like I said, you can move all those clips around just by clicking on the storyline itself. And you can also add transitions to all those clips as well. And to add transitions, you just need to go to the transitions tab. And there are quite a few in there that Final Cut comes with. Or you can go to Motion Array, who is the sponsor of this video today, and download loads of different transitions from the site. Motion Array has loads to choose from. You can go and search for specific transitions that are gonna fit your video. And then once you've downloaded them, you can import them into Final Cut and you can drop them onto your timeline. They work really seamlessly. There's really nothing else for you to do other than to drop them onto the clips. And then you can either make them longer or shorter, depending on how you want those transitions to work. If you do want to try out Motion Array, you can sign up for a free account and it will give you access to some free 
assets that you can try out. And then if you want to go ahead and buy a subscription, then you can get $50 off. I've put a link in the description so you can check it out. So once you've added your transitions to your storyline, if you want to actually add in more clips, you can do that as well. All you have to do is press and hold G and then drag it to the edge of the storyline and it'll automatically put it into the storyline for you. The other way is if you wanted to insert a clip in between two other clips, then press A on your keyboard and then drag that clip between the two clips that you want to put in the storyline and then it'll be added for you. You really wanna make sure that you've got A selected because again, this is gonna make sure that it puts it in between the two clips without disturbing the two clips either side it. Whereas if you've got P selected, so the position tool, then it will place it over the top of the two clips. So it will trim the two clips based on however long the clip is that you're placing onto that timeline or storyline, sorry. So once you've created a storyline, they act like individual clips. So like I said, you can literally click on the storyline and move it around the timeline without having to select all the clips. But because of this, in terms of acting like an individual clip, they have their own connection points as well. So if you want to move a storyline from one primary storyline clip to another, so it's not connected to one primary storyline, then you can do that in the same way that you would do it if you were moving a connected clip. So you just click on the storyline at the point where you want to move it to a new clip and then it will change the stem of that clip or that storyline. So the next feature which is really handy that I use all the time are roles and these are a really great way to organize and label all your footage and your audio clips. So you get some default ones already so you get a title, dialogue, uh, video, sound effects, music. And if you want to apply any of those roles, all you have to do is right click on one of your clips, whether it's in the browser or the timeline, and then assign a either a video role or assign an audio role and then you'll see that the clip changes color and like i said you can do this either when the clips are on the timeline or when they're in the browser before you've dragged them onto the timeline So if you want to add your own roles, there's an index panel where you can see all the roles that are there. Those roles won't actually show up until you start placing your footage onto the timeline and your clips onto the timeline. But as you do that, you'll see that the roles start populating in that index panel. And if you want to add any of your own roles, then you can hit edit roles that will bring up the roles window and then you can add video roles or audio roles and you can also add sub roles as well. You can also disable certain clips based on their role as well. So if you wanted to play back your video footage and you didn't want to listen to the sound effects, you could toggle that sound effects category role and then that would disable those clips so that you wouldn't hear them. Likewise with the music or with dialogue or anything like that. So it just means that you have more control over what you're listening to and how you edit. So what works really great with the roles is audio lanes because this allows you to separate out and organize your audio clips on the timeline visually. So you get a separate layer for each role that you create, whether it's a main role or a sub role, it's all split out into its own layer. And the audio lanes are labeled with the roles that you created in the index panel. You can choose to show all the audio lanes or you can choose to show individual audio lanes so that you're just focusing on that one specific lane. So for example, if you are adding sound effects to your video, you could choose to focus only on that layer. And if you do need to get sound effects for your video, again, you can use Motion Array. They have a huge variety of sound effects. So one of the great things about Motion Array for sound effects is when you search for a different sound effect, whether you type in a whip whoosh or a pan or anything like that, you can search for sound effects based on the action that you want. And it's really great. It will just bring up loads of different sound effects for you. But those sound effects are also grouped. So if you find one that you like, then there'll be several other ones in that bundle. So you don't have to go th necessarily go through and find loads of different other ones that might work and then individually download them. They'll just download an entire zip folder for you of those sound effects and then you've got them all there. And then you can do that with another sound effect that you find as well and then you've got another bundle. So it's really great because it gives you access to loads of different sound effects and they're all packaged up for you in a really neat way. And then once you bring that sound effect into Final Cut, you can apply a sound effects roll to it and then it will automatically be added to that sound effects audio lane. And then you can change the volume, add transitions to the sound effects, 
anything that you want to make it work with your footage. And so when it comes to actual dialogue, audio lanes and roles are so useful because if you want to split out two different people who were talking in your video, then you can do that with the audio lanes because you'll be able to assign a different role to each of them. So for example, if I didn't want to have my guest in my video, then I could isolate that audio so it just played me or vice versa. So it's just a great way of organizing all your audio on your timeline. So with audio lanes and roles, that's pretty much the basics of them. There's so much more that you can do, for example, exporting specific tracks. And that's something that I can talk about in another video because this video would be too long otherwise. But yeah, there's so much more that you can do. But I hope the overview of all the features was really useful for you. If it was, do give the video a like because it helps out the channel. And thank you to Motion Array for sponsoring this video. Like I said, you can get $50 off if you want to get a subscription. The link is in the comments and the description of this video. If you want to see more Final Cut tutorials, let me know in the comments because I'm more than happy to create them. I actually really enjoy it. But thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you on the next one.